Today is module four, lesson 20 on writing and evaluating expressions, but today we're going to look at multiplication and division. We already did addition and subtraction, and we know that those are inverse operations. So multiplication and division, also inverse operations that uh, we can use when solving real world problems and writing expressions. Let's take a look at the first exercise. Number one, the farmer's market is selling bags of apples. In every bag, there are three apples. So go ahead and complete that table. They already put the headings on the table for you. They already started filling in the table for you. So now we're going to fill in that chart. If one bag has three apples, picture the two bags. How many apples would be in two bags? Well, here's one bag with three apples. Here's a second bag with three apples. So how many apples are there? Six. Exactly. Be careful. So three bags would have nine apples. Four bags would have. So what operation did we repeat over and over? We repeated what? That way back in the ratios in the beginning of the year we did tables like this. So if B is the number of bags, and there are three apples in each bag, what equation could I write to represent that? Well, I didn't add three because three plus three is not nine. Four plus three is not twelve. So adding three is not the pattern that went all the way down. We multiplied by three all the way down. So B times three, we would write as three B. Okay, and we always write the coefficient first and then the variable. We do not need an operation symbol because we know when the coefficient and variable are side by side like that, it means multiplication. Do I see on um, whether the variables always have to be like large? Yeah, we've always seen, ladies, we've always seen uh, variables written in lowercase. However, now we're starting to see them as capital letters. To be honest, I'm not comfortable with that. I've never seen it before. But from the training that I went through at the state, they are writing in capital letters now. That can be. So I, if they give you the variable in that form, use it in that form. If you're writing it on your own, I would write a lowercase letter, okay? All right, well, what if the market had 25 bags to sell? How many apples is that? Well, if bags equals B, so if B equals 25, right? Write that in your notes. Now, our e expression was 3B. I'm going to replace my variable with the number. What is B? 25. Notice I'm going top to bottom. First line is my expression or my formula. Then my second line, I replace my letters with my numbers. Then I can multiply, and that's 75 what? Apples. Seventy-five apples. So I had how many bags? Times three apples per bag, and I found the total number of apples. But now we've got a truck. The truck comes in and has apples. So I have a big truck. So you have to picture in your head what you have. Picture the bag. Picture the apples. And that will prevent you from making some of the mistakes that we made earlier filling in that table. So I have a big truck. Okay? So the truck full of apples is A. And now I have to take those apples and separate them into bags. So I'm pulling out from A three apples, three apples, three apples. I'm separating my big truck, here's my truck A, and I'm separating it into groups of three. So what am I doing? What operation
expression, what expression is that? Division. I'm taking my total A and dividing it by 3. So that's how many bags, but I might need one more bag. If I had one apple left over, I would need an extra bag. If I had two apples left over, I would need an extra bag. But the equation that I would write would be A divided by 3. So if a truck arrived that had 600 more apples in it, how many bags would the clerks use? So if it's A divided by 3, and my A equals 600, I'm going to replace my letter with my number, and then I do my division. Now 200 what? Bags. So in B, I had the bags, I had to find the apples. Now in example C, <coughs> excuse me, I had the apples, I had to find the bags. Yes, replace. Expression, replace, and solve. Just like area, volume, right? The formula, replace the letter with the number, and solve. So part D, how are they different? Part D gives the number of apples and asks for the number of bags. Therefore, we need to divide the number of apples by 3. Part B gave us the number of bags and asked for the number of apples. Therefore, we needed to multiply the number of bags by 3. Okay, let's look at another example. In New York State, there is a five-cent deposit on all carbonated beverage cans and bottles. When you return the empty can or bottle, you get your five cents back. So let's complete the table. Now read the headings in your table carefully. Be very careful. Read what they're looking for, what form they're looking for. So they're looking for it in dollars. So this would be zero and five cents. Zero dollars and five cents. You don't have to erase it, just add on your... So two bottles would be ten cents, and that's how it's written in dollar format. Three would be fifteen. Four would be twenty cents. But now it jumps to ten. So I hope you didn't just keep counting up by five, because this would be 50 cents. That would be $2.50. $5. So what did we do every single time? What did we do each time? By, not by five. That would be cool if we got $5 back every time, but that would be really expensive when you go to buy a six-pack of Diet Coke, which we all know, I drink way too much Diet Coke. My husband would never buy me Diet Coke anymore if he had to pay $5 for every can. Yeah. Not multiply by five. That would be $5 per can. This is only $0.05 cents per can. Multiply by point zero five. Right, 0 0.05 times C, which is the number of camps. Remember that your number, your coefficient, always goes first. Um, the one for 50, wouldn't it be $1? No, because 50 times 5 cents would be 0 0.25, and I move my decimal two places. Okay? So if we let C represent the number of cans, what is the expression? Five cents per can. Per means to multiply. Five cents times the number of cans. 
So now let's use that expression. If they want you to use that expression, come on, there you go. You should write that expression down. You always start with your formula or your expression. Now let's replace our variable with what we know. That's what we know. The number of cans equals 222. So wherever I see C, I'm going to replace it. 0 0.05 times 222 because that's the number of cans. Whoops, what did I just do to my arrow? That's supposed to be my arrow. I replaced C with the number that they gave me. So go ahead, use your margins, do that multiplication. Okay. Margins, multiply. Do your multiplication. Make sure your answer is reasonable. So what is 222? Is my answer going to be greater than or less than 222? God bless you, God bless you. Should be less than because I'm multiplying it by less than a whole. Should be greater than or less than 100. Less than because I'm multiplying it by, le multiplying it by less than half. So I should have a much smaller number than 222. Right. So our answer is $11.10. All right, so now we know how much it is per can. But now Gavin needs to earn $4.50. So how many cans does he need to collect and return? So now we're looking at it the other way. Now I have my total $4.50. How many groups of a nickel can I pull out? How many nickels are in $4.50? So what operation is that going to be? Right. So I have $4.50, and I have to divide it by my $0.05 cent deposit. So go ahead and do that division. So remember that we write it this way. But we do not want a decimal in our divisor. So we have to move it to a whole number. So if I move it two places in my divisor, I move it two places in my dividend. So now it's 450 divided by 5. And all these steps should be written on the board. So what is the answer when you're done dividing? It's for somebody else's turn. Thank you, though. What did you get? 90. Right, 90 what? No, 90 is correct. Not 9.0, 90, but 90 what? 90 cans. Think about what it means. What is it representing? So in part B, I'm sorry, in part C, we were looking for how much money. In part D, we were looking for how many cans. So that's the difference. Part D gives the amount of money and asks for the cans. So we needed to divide. Part C gives the number of cans, but asks for the money. So now you need to multiply. Let's take a look at example three. The fare for a subway or a local bus ride is 250. I have no idea why I put a picture of a taxi on there. Okay, so let's complete the table. So we have the number of rides and the cost of the ride in dollars. So one ride is $2.50. Two rides is $5.750. fifty. Ten. Twelve fifty. But now be careful, it jumps from 5 to 10. So 25, 75. So I'm taking my number of rides, and I'm always multiplying it by? Right. 
So it's two dollars and fifty cents times the number of rides. You could always drop that zero and do two point five times R also. Again, I'm much more comfortable using lowercase letters for your variable, but I guess they're showing us now that they're interchangeable. So don't be concerned if you typically see a lowercase letter. Why wouldn't you put the dollar sign? Because we're just writing um, expressions right now, and it tells us dollars right there. If we let R represent the number of rides, what is the expression? 2.5R or 2.50R. They mean the same thing. So now let's use that expression. If we're using that expression, we have to bring it down. So what is my R? Use the expression to find out how much money 60 rides would cost. So what's my R? Right, R equals 60. So wherever I see R, times, I'm going to replace it with 60. So now you can come to your margin and do your multiplication. So what's 2.5 times 60? Excuse me? Now we're going to label it with the dollar sign, $150. If you want to label our answer, whether it's um, apples or dollars, we want to label it. But then you didn't use the expression. It said to use the expression. You have to follow the directions. That's not always going to work. If it was 74, 76. That strategy wouldn't work. The direction said to use the expression. So if the commuter spends $175 on subway or bus rides, how many trips did the commuter take? So now we have the total amount, and we have to divide it among all the different trips. So we have $175, and we have to divide that into our $2.50 trips. So to divide that, it's much easier, I think, if we write it in the house. We cannot have decimals in our divisor, so we have to move them over. So now I have 250 into 17,500. Do the division. So what did you get when you divide it? <clears throat> 70. 70 what? Right. So now I know what my R is. I didn't know what my R was before. I didn't know how many rides. So again, the difference was part D gave us the money. We had to find how many rides. We had to find R. In part C, they told us what R was. They told us the number of rides, and we had to find the amount of money because multiplication and division are inverse operations. So one time we had to divide, one time we had to multiply, and those help us with our uh, expressions. We don't have a lot of time left, but let's see if we could try the challenge. Okay, a pendulum. So a pendulum is something that swings back and forth, um, like a swing or on a Google top, the thing that goes underneath. This part is the pendulum. It swings. <coughs> Owen made a pendulum that swings 12 times every 15 seconds. Construct a table showing the number of cycles through which a pendulum swings. Include data for up to one minute. Use the last row for C cycles. So let's see, we have the number of cycles. I 
and the time in seconds. So it swings 12 times in 15 seconds. So it'll swing 24 cycles in 30 seconds. 36 cycles in 45 seconds. 48 swings in 60 seconds. It said to stop in a minute. So how did we do that? How did we do that? Ready? You want to see? It's the number of cycles multiplied by 15. Then we would divide it by 12. Because each cycle is 15 seconds divided by the 12 swings. So you know how fast the, swing, the pendulum would go in one second. Okay? I told you this one was a challenge, so if this one's a little confusing, that's okay. We were just trying to take it to the next level for some of you who are ready for that. So it's 15 seconds per cycle. 15 seconds per cycle. What's a cycle? 12 swings. So that way you can figure out how many swings per second. Alright, so that one was just a little bit challenging. So all of his pendulum team set up their pendulum in motion and counted 16 cycles. What was the elapsed time? So what you would have to do, if this was our formula, 15 times C divided by 12, 15 C equals 16. So 15 times 16 divided by 12. <laughs> Your answer would be 20 seconds. Don't worry if this one confuses you. It's meant to be a challenge.